We all know that solar panels are a very important component of a spacecraft. They provide the spacecraft with power, preserving the precious liquid fuel for important maneuvering and propulsion operations. For satellites, solar panels offer long-term reliable power supply as it takes decades for solar cells to degrade to levels where their output is half the output at the beginning of operation. Solar panels have been used in spacecraft since 1958. They were first used in Vanguard 1 satellite. At the time, crystalline silicon panels were used because they were the only ones that were being researched. As research expanded to thin film solar panels in the late 70s, alternative was found to crystalline silicon panels. Gallium arsenide thin film panel proved to be a great replacement. It had two particular properties that made it superior to crystalline silicon. First was its degradation over time, which was much lower than that of silicon-based panels. Secondly, its efficiency didn't change much with the change in temperature of the panel. It should be noted that degradation of the panel occurs because of cyclic thermal load. Panels expand and contract with temperature. As a result, over time cracks appear in the silicon structure. Solar panels in space receive a very unadulterated form of solar radiation. Whereas terrestrial solar panels receive sunlight that is slightly less potent because of atmospheric attenuation. In space, solar panels can receive sunlight with power as much as 1367 watt per meter square. This means that the temperature of the panel can jump up to 150 degrees centigrade when facing the sun. Similarly, when the satellite is on the other side not facing the sun, that is the earth is shading it from the sun exposure, then its temperature can drop as low as minus 100 degrees centigrade. The advantage as we mentioned of gallium arsenide over crystalline silicon is that it can handle the cyclic thermal load much better over the range of temperature. Furthermore, the change in performance of the panel with changing temperature is also comparatively lower. Gallium arsenide panels are not viable for terrestrial application be it domestic or commercial. When it comes to spacecraft, money is not the concern as much as the robustness of the components. The cost savings in satellite is mostly achieved by reducing the size and the weight of the payload. Therefore, higher efficiency panels are most useful because this means smaller panels will be used for the same amount of power required, which means that lesser weight and lesser volume. There are essentially two or more layers of the solar cells stacked on each other. Each cell layer is tuned to deal with a certain portion of the solar spectrum. Collectively, they are able to harness most of the solar radiation. For example, multi-junction solar cells today used in satellites are more than 39.2% efficient, meaning they can produce 535 watts of electric power from 1367 watts of energy they receive on a meter square area. Compare this to the best terrestrial panel that would be able to produce only 300 watt from the same input. The cost of multi-junction solar cell is again prohibitively expensive for their use in domestic power application. They cost at least four times more than crystallized silicon panels of the same capacity. Thank you.